you guys, welcome to a brand new episode on the College Crafts channel. I know it's been a while since we've released last, obviously with college, work, social life, it's kind of hard to uh, sometimes get these videos out, especially for a project as big as this one, but putting the amount of time that we did turned out to be fantastic and I loved the end result. The philosophy behind this channel, because due to the fact that I'm not going to be at college much longer, actually I only have a year left, um, I want other people to be able to take this channel, more people to people from around the U.S. to upload to it. So it can be a creative outlet for these college students who create something fun, wacky, or something that's pretty practical and cheap for other college students to give a try, and then they would send it to the channel's email or something like that, and then we would post it. Uh, but obviously we are a young channel just starting out, so right now it's just me, the people around me, and my twin brother and the people around him. But today we are making a, a bar and we put it in an epoxy top. Obviously, that is something that you don't need to do. Just having a regular top works great, but we wanted that beer cap look. Um, and yeah, I hope you guys really like it. For the bar, we wanted to create a U-type shape by connecting three separate segments and cutting them all at 22.5 degrees. And I'll show you the measurements on the later slide. So we got some two by fours from family and then cut them at that 22.5 degree angle. Then we screwed and glued them together. The reason that we are making this in three separate segments is because we are moving to a different house and this house is gonna have more space so we can fit this bar, but it's gonna be turning some tight corners in order to get to the place that it's going to stay for the rest of the year. So we decided to keep it in three separate segments to help us move and also it'd be easier to move. You obviously want to make two parts of the outline because that's going to be the top and the bottom and it's going to be separated by these other 2x4s that we have that were cut into three foot tall segments and we are going to glue them to the top and bottom and screw them together. Plain and simple. You just want to put enough support to make sure that everything is completely stable and you want to make sure that everything is completely level at all times and this took a while so I hope you enjoy this little time lapse of us putting the outline together. For the sake of time, we are going to only show you the building process of one of these three segments, but we will periodically show you what everything looks together combined every once in a while so that you can get a feel for what it's going to look like in the end. So after constructing the outline together, it was time to sand everything flush, and then we stained it to the color that we wanted it to be, which was a dark brown, and we used a quick dry stain, making sure to wipe down with a paper towel right after so that you don't have any drips. We got some free pallet boards from a nearby business, which you can do as long as you ask for permission. And then we cut them and pieced them together like a puzzle on top of the bar outline, making sure that everything fit and was level, which we had glued and clamped together for an entire night and drilled it into the tabletop. Now it doesn't have to look very good because it's going to be completely covered. During this process, you want to make sure that everything fits and is flush and is level while you're screwing in the top into the bar frame. Now I know the pallet boards can look a little bit rough when you're doing this, but keep in mind that after a quick sand, making sure that everything is flush, it also gets rid of all that dirt and grime on top, making it look the same color and look fantastic at the end. You just need to make sure that you're getting rid of all the ridges in between the individual pallet pieces and that everything is flat and looking amazing. 
Now I know not everyone might have this, but we have found a barn board in the basement and we decided that it looked really cool and we wanted to implement that into the bar. And it wasn't quite long enough to fit the entire length, so what we did is we cut it in half and then we would cut it at the same angles that we did the bar outline and then glued and clamped it into place. Once again, making sure that everything was flush at all times to avoid problems in the future. But before we were able to attach the barn board, we had to make sure that the entire top was stained and we thought that having a white stain on top would be really cool in contrast to the dark brown outside. So we stained the top and then you can see me on the side sanding another pallet boards and these are going to be the sides which we cut to the height of 39 inches and sanded them down as you saw me doing and stained them the same dark brown as we did the bar frame. Once the stain had dried, it was time to attach the siding to the bar frame. And to do that, we got a quarter inch piece of wood and put that in between each slat of the bar siding and quickly drilled it into the bar and then grabbing the next piece, putting the spacer in and then drilling it again. And it was repeated over and over and over until the boards went all the way across the entire section. We wanted our bar top to have bottle caps around the entire thing and fill it with epoxy to give it a really cool look. But one of the problems that we were facing was the fact that epoxy is extremely expensive and the bar top had to be flush with the top of the barn board which was three quarters of an inch thick which would have caused us to use a lot of epoxy considering bottle caps are only a quarter inch thick. To get around this and save some money and save a lot of epoxy, we decided to take some pallet boards, some thinner ones, and cut them to the same angle creating this little bump in the bar top where the bottle caps would go around it to give it an infinity edge look while also saving an epoxy in the middle but while that was being worked on i was tasked with making sure that all the bottle caps were looking good and not completely bent and to do that i took a mallet and a piece of metal that roughly fit the shape of the bottle caps and just hammered them into place making sure to clean up the edges if they started to bend in weird directions. This job is something that you can take a lot of your stress out on, but after the bump in the middle has been cut to length and glued and clamped for an entire night, all you need to do is stain it and wipe up the drips. To make sure that during the epoxy pour that none of the epoxy was going to leak out the back of the barn board, we had to seal it with a clear caulk. We needed to make sure to wipe up all the edges because we didn't know how much of this we would be able to get off, so as long as it was flush since it is a clear caulk it should be transparent as long as the sides are wiped up it'll look completely straight and like i've been saying throughout this entire project just take your time with it and enjoy the process that you may or may not have done before now the next step is something that we've been excited for we gathered all the bottle caps that we may have consumed or went to bars and asked the bartender for their bottle caps so we could add a little bit more variety into the type of bottle caps that we had on the bar top and then we organized them into a way that made it look randomized just picking random ones and making sure if we had duplicates of certain kinds that they weren't too close to one another and then made sure that they were all facing straight forward and gluing them into place using hot glue which you have to make sure goes all the way around the bottle cap to completely seal it so that no air can escape during the epoxy pour and make bubbles in the epoxy now it is time to prep for the epoxy pour and to do that we We've got some melamine, which is particle board with this vinyl wrap around it that doesn't stick to epoxy or a lot of other things. And we put these little wood blocks in the bottom of the bar top to act as a little ledge for the melamine to sit on. Using some short screws, drilling into the bottoms, making sure that the screws aren't long enough to poke through the top. We then cut the melamine into strips, attached it to the wood blocks, sealed it with cock and made way for this legendary comment. I like cocks. 
The last step before the epoxy pour is to brush it down and spray it down to get rid of any sawdust or debris. And now it was finally time for the epoxy pour. And for this we used a two-part epoxy, a hardener, and the resin. And then we poured it into a five-gallon bucket. And then something that I learned from my first mess up with epoxy is that you have to mix it for at least five minutes. So using a drill with a paint mixer attachment, I mixed it for a solid five minutes and then it was time to pour it. Starting out with the channels, we wanted to do it in layers, so we filled up all the channels that were holding the bottle caps. And then using a hair dryer to get out as many bubbles as possible, but it didn't do very well as you can see later. After drying there were still a lot of bubbles present, but we didn't let that deter us because we thought it was cool by saying it looks like there was carbonation from the open bottles. So your mistakes can have a great outcome, and that's something really important for this project. Although we did get a heat gun afterwards which performed substantially better than the hair dryer, but we used it because we didn't want the bubbles to be too overwhelming overwhelming to the point where you wouldn't even see the bottle caps and covered it up afterwards with plaster wrap to prevent dust getting on it. While the epoxy is drying it's good to get other stuff done on the bar that you wanted to get done. We wanted a few electronics on there so we put a really small mini fridge in there and then we also got outlets on either side of the bar and to do the outlet all you need to do is get the dimensions of the back find the center of the board that you're going to be putting it on and then using a jigsaw and a drill you would drill a hole into the board and then use a jigsaw to cut out the square form and then just push it in but the problem is the screws on the outlet are a little bit too long and would poke through the back and you could hurt yourself on a sharp one so we started by pre-drilling with a sharp screw and then cutting it in half and then drilling the cut screw into place and then something we didn't record was we installed three bottle cap openers, one on either outside corner piece and one on the inside of the bar. We wanted a row of shelves on the bar so we grabbed a board and used it as a measuring tool by drilling a hole into it at the height that we wanted the shelves to be at and then using that on every single post, using it as a measuring tool to get it at the same height every single time. And then we grabbed a jigsaw and some pallet boards, cut the pallet boards to fit inside, sanded and stained them and installed. Next was the baseboards. So to do that, I grabbed another pallet board and then laid it underneath the bar and traced it along the inside. Now we needed a way to attach it without having ugly screws poking out. So what we did is we grabbed some wooden scrap pieces or some wooden dowels and then laid them along the inside so that when the pallet board was laying on top, it would sit completely flush with the bottom of the bar. And we glued those dowels into place and then using a staple gun, which you don't really have to do, you can glue it and just leave it overnight, but we wanted to hustle. So we glued it and stapled it into place and grabbed the board that we cut, sanded, and stained and put it on top. And then we making sure to glue the tops of the dowels and then using a nail gun, nailed it into place, which you don't need a nail gun, obviously you can use regular small nails, but since we had one lying around, we thought we'd use it and finished the bottom. Now it was time for the second epoxy pour, so we did the same thing where we mixed it for five to six minutes and poured it, but this time we wanted a little bit of a cooler effect where we got some epoxy coloring and then drizzled that on top of the epoxy pour and then using a toothpick ran it around to create this wispy smoky pattern that we thought was really cool. And then using the heat gun because we decided to upgrade, got rid of all the bubbles that we could see. We decided to put a pallet board in the middle of the two 2x4s two that made the frame. So we cut it to height, sanded and stained it, and then using some L brackets, we screwed them into the bottom and the top, trying to make sure at all times that it was constantly flush with the outside to make it look like it was always there in the first place. And we knew that the bar was going to be receiving power for the lights, the mini fridge, and the outlets. So using a spade bit we cut a hole that could fit an entire extension cable head through so that we could later attach a smart power strip because we wanted it to be voice command on and off. Which we also needed to do for the shelving unit so that we could feed the mini fridge cable through. And then also we did it for a wall that we were going to build for the power box. Being careful not to start a fire because these things seem to run very hot.
Now it was time to create the power box that would hide all the electronics. So to do that we got even more pallet boards, glued and screwed them together, sanded them down, and then using some wooden dowels, we glued them down, then stapled them into place, staining them afterwards, and making sure there was one on front and one on back, and we wanted the doors to slide in and out, so we put another one that was properly spaced behind it so that the door would be able to fit and slide in and out. We did that for the top and bottom so that it would remain completely upright, just constantly checking at all times that the door would be able to fit in. The next thing to do was attach the smart power strip. We did that by getting four command strips, peeling the back, and attaching it through the power hole that we had just drilled. And then we, all we had to do was slide the doors into place and attach the door handle so that we can easily remove the doors. Now that the last pour of epoxy was finally dry, we were able to remove the blocks at the bottom of the surface. And then taking a piece of cardboard and a hammer, we slowly pounded the melamine off the epoxy top, sliding it against the cardboard to not damage the epoxy surface. And just like that, the top was done. And the last thing to do was to put in clips that will hold all the power cords and all the lights, and then route the power strips and lights through said clips, and then we can give you a tour of the finished bar. Minus the foot rail, but that will come after the tour. Now the last thing to do to, before the entire project was done was to create a foot rail. To do that we grabbed the remaining melamine boards, cut it to 6 inches, and did the same for 1 inch foam, laid the foam on top of the melamine, and then using synthetic leather wrap, which is very cheap on Amazon, stapling it into place on the bottom, cutting it to the dimensions that you want, then we put 2x4 blocks at the bottom where we could stick some sanded and stained pallet boards which you've seen us do enough of. And just like that, the entire thing was finally done, and I can't wait to move it in. Well, I hope you guys all had as much fun watching that as I did building it. Please be sure to like, share, and subscribe so that we can help this channel start to take off. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye!